Management of the First Stage of Labor by Jones H.M., MBA DMS. Aims. 1. To monitor the maternal well-being. 2. To monitor the fetal well-being. 3. To monitor the progress of labor. Environment. If the cervical dilatation is 3 cm and below the woman is admitted to the antenatal ward, a cervical dilatation of 4 cm and above will require that the woman be admitted to the labor ward. Ensure a clean environment, well ventilated, with good lighting. Ensure privacy, you can even use screens. Maternal well-being. Position and mobility. Nurse the woman either in the left lateral or right lateral position to prevent supine hypotensive syndrome. Let the woman move up and about to promote descent of the presenting part. If she so wishes she can sit in bed or on a chair to promote descent. However if the membranes are ruptured, she should lie in bed and avoid moving around to prevent cord prolapsed. Rest. Rest is important because it will give the mother enough energy to push the baby in the second stage of labor. Psychological care. Never leave a woman who is in labor alone. The attitude of the nurse is very important and can affect the outcome of labor. Welcome the woman cheerfully, with kindness, understanding and patience to keep up her courage and morale. Explain all procedures to be done on her. Allow the support person or husband to be on the bedside. A gentle touch and a smile will reassure the patient. Explain to the patient the findings of examinations done especially the vaginal examination. Commend for the good things that she does. Be positive as you talk to the woman. Relief of pain. Massage the woman's back at the sacral region to relive. Advise the woman to take a deep breath. In the early first stage of labor, analgesia such as pethidine 50 mg can be given as prescribed by the obstetrician to relieve pain and promote trust. Before administering pethidine assess the cervical dilatation by means of vaginal examination to ensure it is less than 6 cm to prevent fetal distress. Ensure you document any medication given on the partograph. Medication. Combiver, a combination of zidovudine 300 mg and lamivudine 150 mg every 12 hours for mothers who are HIV positive and on ARV prophylaxis. HIV positive mothers who are on ART should continue taking ART the way they take it. Pethidine 50 mg before 6 cm cervical dilatation is prescribed by the obstetrician. Observations Observations carried out are documented on the partograph. The partograph is used in the active phase of the first stage of labor. Monitor the vital signs of temperature 4 hourly, pulse half hourly, blood pressure 4 hourly. Do your analysis on every specimen of urine. All drugs given to the mother are documented on the partograph. Intravenous fluids given to the mother during labor are documented on the spaces provided on the partograph. If the cervical dilatation is below 4 cm, the woman is admitted to the antenatal ward and vital signs are checked 4 hourly and documented on the chart. The partograph is not opened. Diet and fluids. Encourage the woman to take sweet drinks or light porridge which are easily digestible for energy. Vigorous uterine contractions during labor require a constant supply of glucose. If not obtained from the diet, the body will metabolize stored proteins and fat which leads to fetal acidosis and uterine inertia. Let the woman take plenty of fluids to prevent dehydration. Record intake and output on the partograph. Do not give the woman solid foods because of delayed gastric emptying. Care of the bladder. Advise the woman to empty her bladder every two hours or whenever she feels like passing urine because a full bladder interferes with descent of the fetal head thereby prolonging labor. Uterine contractions become weak if the bladder is full. If woman is unable to pass urine, catheterize her. A full bladder can lead to bladder rupture. Hygiene If the woman is in the early stages of the first stage of labor, she can have a bath. Change the linen frequently. If the woman is draining, change pads frequently. Advise the woman to wash her hands if she touches her genitalia. Infection prevention. Hand washing facilities should be available in the admission room to prevent infection. Sterile gloves and a sterile vaginal examination pack should be used to do a vaginal examination to prevent introducing infection into the vagina. Vaginal examinations should be minimal to prevent introducing infection into the vagina. Avoid artificial rupture of the membranes to prevent mother to child transmission of HIV. A sharp box should be available for disposal of sharps. 
decontamination of used instruments in JIC-1, 6 should be done to prevent infection. Fetal will be Monitor fetal heart sounds half hourly, note the rate, frequency and volume. The normal range is between 120 to 160 beats per minute. If above 160 or below 120 indicates fetal distress. Use a pinard fetoscope or Doppler to check the fetal heart sounds. The liquor and membranes give information about fetal condition. After rupture of membranes normal liquor is clear. After each vaginal examination take note of the color of the gloves to note the state of the liquor and plot on the partograph. Dark green meconium will indicate fetal distress. Absent liquor may indicate ruptured membranes. Then listen to the fetal heart sounds. Check for molding and caput formation to rule out fetal brain damage. Record on the partograph the above information. Progress of labor. The first vaginal examination done in the active phase of labor should be indicated on the partograph. The cervical dilatation should be documented as X on the alert line and time should be recorded on the space for time. If labor is progressing well the plotting for cervical dilatation will remain on the left of the alert line. Descent is determined abdominally. The nurse puts her hand over the fetal head, if all fingers cover the head, it is said five-fifths above the brim. Descent is assessed every four hours. Note the length, strength and frequency of uterine contractions. When you place your hand on the fundal part of the uterus, note the hardness and classify the contractions as mild, lasting 20 seconds, moderate, between 20 to 40 seconds, and strong, 40 to 60 seconds. Observe the contractions every 30 minutes. Count how many contractions there are in 10 minutes. Preparation FO The second stage of labor. Towards the end of the first stage of labor, the nurse should make preparations for conducting the second stage of labor. The delivery room should be warm, clean and ensure privacy. A resuscitor, oxygen, suction machine should be available. Prepare the baby cot as well as the baby layette. Prepare baby's identification band. Provide a sterile delivery pack and a episiotomy pack for use during delivery. Find an assistant to help you conduct the delivery. Complications that can occur during the first stage of labor. 1. Fetal distress due to reduction of blood flow to the placenta or fetus such as hypotension, hypertension or due to cord compression. 2. Prolonged first stage of labor due to factors affecting the progress of labor, e.g. condition of the powers such as malpositition and malpresentation of the fetus. 3. Maternal distress due to prolonged labor or any other cause. 4. Cord presentation, it exists when a loop or loops of the umbilical cord lie below the presenting part of the fetus with membranes intact. Can be due to malposition or malpresentation, cephalopelvic disproportion where there is ill-fitting presenting part. 5. Cord prolapse exists when a loop or loops of the umbilical cord protrudes through the cervix into the vagina or vulva with membranes ruptured. Is due to ill-fitting presenting part. 6. Antipartum hemorrhage either due to placenta previa or placenta abruptio. Hi, my name is Jones Muna, today we look at at the second stage of labor. The second stage of labor begins at full cervical dilatation and ends with complete birth of the baby. It lasts approximately 30-45 minutes in a primigravita, should not exceed 1 hour, and 15-30 minutes in the multigravita. Should not exceed 30 minutes. The second stage of labor is divided into two phases. 1. Latent phase, from full cervical dilatation to the time that the presenting part is visible at the perineum. 2. Active expulsive perineal phase. Appearance of the presenting part to complete expulsion of the fetus. The mother has a strong urge to push voluntarily. The physiology of the second stage of labor. 1. Contraction and retraction. The nature of contractions becomes more expulsive. As pressure is exerted on the rectum and pelvic floor, the mother feels the urge to push and the secondary powers, abdominal muscles and diaphragm, come into play. The reflex may be controlled initially, but becomes increasingly impulsive, overwhelming and involuntary. 2. Pelvic soft tissue displacement. Anteriorly the bladder is pushed upwards into the abdomen, resulting in stretching and thinning of the urethra. The advancing head dilates the vagina and may lacerate the mucosa, causing slight bleed. 
The perineal body is flattened, stretched and thin from the triangular 4x4 cm to a transparent 10 cm in length, lengthening the posterior wall of the vagina causing the vaginal orifice to be directed upwards. Posteriorly the rectum becomes flattened into the sacral curve, and any fecal content is expelled. The anus pouts and gradually gapes until the opening is 2.5 cm in diameter. 3. Expulsion of the fetus. The head is seen at the vulva, advancing with each contraction and receding between contractions until crowning. The head is then borne by extension, the shoulders and body follow with the next contraction together with the rest of the amniotic fluid. Signs of the second stage of labor. Anticipatory or presumptive signs. Expulsive uterine contractions, it is possible for a woman to feel a strong desire to push before the cervix is fully dilated pressure exerted on the rectum. Rupture of the four waters, this may occur at any time during labor. Pout and gaping of the anus, deep engagement of the presenting part and premature maternal effort may produce this sign. Congestion of the vulva, enthusiastic premature pushing may also cause this. Sweating and shivering, flushing. Vomiting or hiccups. Trickle of blood per vagina. Gaping of vulva. Bulging of the perineum. Appearance of the presenting part. Conclusive or diagnostic. It is only on vaginal examination that confirmation of the commencement of the second stage of labor can be made. This is full dilatation of the cervix, meaning no cervix at all, is felt during vaginal examination. Management of the second stage of labor. Aims. 1. To ensure a live and safe delivery. 2. To prevent complications. Preparation for delivery. Maintain normal room temperature of 26 degrees centigrade which is warm. Let the woman empty the bladder or pass a catheter, if she is unable to pass urine to prevent delay of the second stage and third stage as well as preventing rupturing the bladder. Place the woman in the dorsal position or squatting or position of her choice to promote descent and are good for pushing. Wash your hands, dry them and open the outer part of the delivery pack. Put on a mask, sterile gown and gloves and complete the preparation of the sterile field. The assistant is responsible for fetal monitoring and maternal well-being, as well as efficiency of the uterine contractions. She should do the observations every five minutes. She should also ensure that the mother maintains a good position and gives clear and helpful instructions. Stand on the right side of the patient. Swab the perineum with antiseptic and place one towel under the woman's buttocks. And the other one on the abdomen. Delivery of the head. Place a sterile pad over the perineum and a nuss using the right hand. Advise the woman to push with each contraction. Watch and control the advance of the fetal head in a downward direction using the left hand so that the smallest diameter presents. Cover the perineum and a nuss with a sterile pad using the right hand. Decide whether to perform an episiotomy or not. Avoid performing an episiotomy in an HIV-positive woman. The patient should only push when there is a contraction. When the head is crowned, let the woman stop pushing, instead she should pant, so that the head can be delivered slowly to prevent trauma to the head as well as perineal tears. The brow, face and chin are borne by a movement of extension. Check to see if the cord is around the neck. If it is loose, it can be slipped over the shoulders. If it is tight, then apply two artery forceps about 3 cm apart. Hold a swab over the cord, cut and unwind. Clean the baby's eyes and clear baby's airway. Delivery of the shoulders. Allow restitution, the baby will turn, to take place. Place one hand on each baby's side head and apply gentle downward traction and the anterior shoulder should slip under the symphysis pubis. Once the anterior shoulder is free, carry the baby up towards the mother's abdomen. The posterior shoulder can escape over the perineum and the rest of the body will be borne by lateral flexion. Immediate care of the newborn. Dry the baby, clamp the cord by applying two artery forceps about 3 cm apart, hold a swab over the cord cut the umbilical cord. Note the time of birth, assess the APGAR score to ascertain the baby's condition. The parameters of respiration, heart rate, muscle tone, reflex, and color are used. The normal range is 710. Show the baby to the mother to identify the sex and general condition. The assistant should give oxytocin 10U within one minute of delivery to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Place the identity band and on the baby's wrist containing information of the name, file number, date, and time of birth, APGAR score. Initiate breastfeeding as soon as possible to stimulate production of oxytocin which in turn causes contraction of the uterine muscle and promotes bonding. Wrap the baby in a towel to prevent heat loss. 
The void procedure which break the baby's skin or mucous membrane or increases the baby's contact with the mother's blood such as scalp suctioning where it can be avoided. Suctioning may break the mucous membrane. Complications that can occur during the second stage of labor. Perennial tears due to large diameters of the fetal head presenting. Antepartum hemorrhage ether due to placenta previa of abruptio. Fetal distress. Trauma to the fetal head such as tentorial tears due to cephalopelvic disproportion. Prolonged second stage of labor due to full bladder or any other causes. Thanks for listening and keep studying. We've a lot of medical educative content, so kindly click the subscribe button. Hi my name is Jones Muna, today we look at active management of the third stage of labor. Aims. To prevent postpartum hemorrhage. To prevent infection. The active management. Delivery of the placenta and membranes. Immediately after delivery of the baby, palpate the uterus with your left hand to exclude second twin. If there is no second twin, give oxytocin 10 um within one minute of the baby's birth to generate a contraction. Wash hands and dry them. Deep gloves in jick 1 inch 6 and dispose of them. Wash hands and put on another pair of sterile gloves. Explain to the woman what you are about to do. The mother should be in the dorsal position. Put a sterile receiver against a woman's perineum. Move the artery force up close to the perineum. Empty the mother's bladder to prevent delay of the third stage. Wait for a contraction to deliver the placenta. Place your hand at the fundus of the uterus to feel for a contraction. When a contraction is felt, place one hand above the level of the symphysis pubis with the palm facing towards the mother's umbilicus and gently apply pressure in an upward direction and downward traction, controlled cord traction. At the same time firmly apply traction to the cord in a downward direction, using the hand that is grasping the forcep, only apply controlled cord traction when a contraction is felt. Apply steady traction to the cord until the placenta is out, if the maneuver is immediately successful, stop pulling and wait for the contraction and repeat. When the placenta is visible at the vaginal opening, cup it in both hands and rotate the placenta to rope the membranes. Use a gentle upward and downward movement or twisting action to deliver the membranes. Place the placenta and membranes in a receiver. Massage the uterus to rub up a contraction and expel any clots. Ensure the uterus is well contracted to prevent bleeding. Note, in the active management of the third stage of labor, do not wait for the signs of placental separation. Inspection of the birth canal. Should be done with good lighting. Swab the vulva with a sterile piece of gauze. Gently separate the labia and inspect the cervix for any lacerations and tears. Inspect the vagina for lacerations and tears. Inspect the perineum for lacerations and tear. Suture lacerations that need suturing. Wash the vulva and perineum with warm water or antiseptic solution and dry with a clean cloth. Place a clean pad on the woman's perineum. Remove soiled linen and leave the client comfortable. Give appropriate IAC, e.g. the woman should pass urine frequently, should breastfeed the baby on demand depending on the chosen feeding method. Clear, decontaminate, clean equipment and send for sterilization. Let her remain in labor ward for an hour. Wash hands and dry them. Document and report any blood loss and general condition. Examination of the placenta. Wash hands, dry them and put on gloves. Hold the placenta in the palms of the hands, maternal side facing upward. Examine the placenta for completeness check. If all the lobes are present and fit together, any lobe is retained, will lead to postpartum hemorrhage. Hold the cord with one hand and allow the placenta and membranes to hang down. Insert the other hand inside the membranes, with fingers spread out to note any part that could have remained in the uterus. Note the position of insertion of the cord. Measure the length of the cord average length is 55 cm. Average thickness of the cord is 1.5 cm. Inspect the cut end of the cord with the swab for the presence of two arteries and one vein. Observe for true notes. Weigh the placenta normal being one-sixth of the baby's weight. Measure the blood loss and record. Dispose off the placenta by incineration or place in a leak-proof container for buial after consulting the woman about her cultural practices. Immerse both gloved hands in 0.5% chlorine solution. Clean surface area and decontaminate with 0.5% chlorine solution. Remove gloves and place in leak-proof container for disposal. Report and document in client's file. Infection prevention. Use sterile gloves and sterile equipment. Decontaminate all used equipment in JIC 1 to 6 for 10 minutes, then wash in soapy water, rinse, dry and take for sterilization. Clean the delivery bed with JIC 1 to 6 and rinse. 
Decontaminate gloves before disposal. Wear protective clothing, goggles, face mask, plastic apron. Environment. Clean, warm, good lighting. Post-delivery recordings observations. Mother. The vital signs should be taken soon after delivery and recorded, then repeated after an hour which the woman is kept in labor ward before transfer to the postnatal ward. Measure the fundal height and record. Check the vital signs of the baby, and the baby should be breached within 30 minutes of delivery. Let the baby remain with the mother for bonding. Complications of the third stage of labor. 1. Postpartum hemorrhagase the excessive bleeding from the genital tract of 500 mls and above at any time following the baby's birth, up to six weeks after delivery. Primary postpartum hemorrhagase excessive bleeding from the genital tract of 500 mls or more occurring during the third stage of labor or within 24 hours of delivery. It can be due to uterine atony, trauma or tears of the genital tract, coagulation failure. Signs include visible bleeding, maternal collapse. Subtle signs include pallor, rising pulse rate, falling blood pressure, altered level of consciousness, restlessness or drowsy, an enlarged uterus as it fills with blood or blood clots, feels boggy, soft, distended, lacking tone. There may be little or no visible loss of blood. Secondary postpartum hemorrhage is excessive bleeding from the genital tract with a blood loss of 500 mls or more which starts from the first 24 hours after delivery until the end of puerperium. It is most likely to occur between 10 and 14 days after delivery. Secondary PPH can be due to retention of a fragment of the placenta or membranes or a large uterine blood clot, infection. Signs include lachial loss that is heavier than normal and consists of a bright red loss, lachia may be offensive if infection is present and subinvolution of the uterus. 2. Retained placenta. The diagnosis of retained placenta is reached when the placenta remains undelivered after 30 minutes of delivery of the baby. Retained placenta can be due to uterine atony, placenta accrete. 3. Placenta accreta. Is the when the chorionic villi attach directly to the myometrium of the uterus. The adherence may be total, partial or focal depending on the amount of placental involvement. It is suspected when there is retained placenta. Treatment is abdominal hysterectomy because of hemorrhage. 4. Uterine inversion is when the uterus is pulled inside out or the fundus is prolapsed inside out as the placenta is being delivered and partly emerges through the vagina, it can also occur when the baby is being delivered. It can occur due to flabby, non-contracted uterus, pressure on the fundus. 5. Atonic uterus is the failure of uterus at the placental site to contract and retract and to compress torn blood vessels and control blood loss by a living ligature action. Atonic uterus can be due to a full bladder during the third stage, incomplete separation of the placenta, general anesthesia, prolonged labor, etc. Signs include a flabby, non-contracted uterus. 6. Blood coagulation disorders such as disseminated intravascular coagulation a situation of inappropriate coagulation within the blood vessels, which leads to the consumption of clotting factors. As a result clotting fails to occur at the bleeding site. Coagulation failure or failure of blood to clot can occur following severe preeclampsia, antepartum hemorrhage, postpartum hemorrhage due to loss of clotting factors, intrauterine fetal death. 7. Hematoma formation A hematoma can form in the perineum, vagina. It is difficult to diagnose if it occurs in the broad ligament or vault of the vagina. A large volume of blood may collect. Involution and lachia are normal the main symptoms been jinkrasingly severe abdominal pain. This is so acute that the hematoma has to be drained in theater under general anesthesia. Thanks for listening and kindly subscribe to my channel for more educative content. Hi, my name is Jones Muna. Today we look at disorders of puerperium. Puerperium. This is the period which begins from the third stage of labor until the end of the first six weeks post delivery to the time the woman's body returns to normal non gravid state. Bailier's Nurses Dictionary 25th Edition. Disorders of Purperium. These are problems which are encountered from the end the third stage of labor until the end of the first six weeks post-delivery to the time the reproductive organs return to their normal state. These disorders include. 1. Pelvic pain and backache. 2. After pain. 3. Subinvolution. 4. Fuller engorged breast. 5. Constipation. 6. Tender or cracked nipples. 7. Hemorrhoids. 8. Urine retention. 9. Postpartum blues. A pelvic pain and backache. Definition. This is discomfort of pain, 
that is felt in the pelvic region and the back following delivery of the body. Yusef et al. 2008. Causes. 1. Women experience pain and discomfort from the back as a result of separation of abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis. Rectus abdominis separation occur, where the collagen fiber of the abdominal muscles stretch under the effects of the hormone progesterone and relaxing to increase the extensibility of the connective tissue. 2. As the weight of the growing fetus, this adds stress to the spine causing backache. Signs and symptoms. 1. Pain in the pelvic region. 2. Immobility. Treatment. Advice a good skeletal support so as to attain a good posture when feeding the baby and lifting the baby. Encourage the woman to sleep on a board bed. Encourage enough rest. Encourage feasible personal exercise. If pain persists, referral can be made to local physiotherapists. Prescribed analgesics such as paracetamol 1 gram 8 hourly for 3 days will be given. 2. After pain. Definitions. These are spasmodic uterine contractions that are experienced during the first 48 hours postpartum. Causes. 1. Production of oxytocin by the posterior pituitary gland in relation to the letdown response that initiate the contractions in the uterus and causes pain. 2. Presence of blood clots in the uterus postpartum can cause after pains. Signs and symptoms. Abdominal pains. Increased vaginal bleeding even to the extent of passing clots. Treatment. Prescribed drugs can be given such as. Oxytocin 10 IU intramuscularly. This will aid in removing clots. Analgesics such as paracetamol 1 gram 3 times daily for 3 days. Encourage the woman to rest in the most comfortable position. 3. Subinvolution. Definition. This is the failure of the uterus to shrink or return back to its normal size post-delivery. The uterus size appears larger than anticipated for days postpartum and may feel poorly contracted. Causes. Postpartum infection. Full urinary bladder. Presence of retained products of conception. Signs and symptoms. Uterine tenderness on palpation. On palpation, uterus feels wide and bulgy and less well contracted than expected. Offensive lachia where infection has set in. Excessive amount of lachia particularly if it continues to be blood stained after the fourth day. Treatment. If the cause is full bladder, I will advise the woman to empty the bladder, if she fails to void I will catheterize her to empty the bladder. If there will be excessive amount of lachia with clots, I will rub up a contraction to expel the clots, I will put up an intravenous infusion of sodium chloride 0.9% with 40 units of oxytocin added to control bleeding and expel clots at the rate of 20 to 40 drops per minute. Antibiotics will be given as prescribed such as metronidazole 400 mg 3 times daily for 5 days to combat infection. Side effects, headache, dizziness, confusion, fatigue, sore throat, epigastric pains, abdominal cramps and metallic taste. Contraindications? Renal disease, hepatic disease and contracted visual or color fields. Nursing considerations? Asses for allergic reactions, rash, urticaria and pruritus. Check for signs of infection, perennial itching, fever, malas, pain, and swelling. 4. Breast engorgement. Definition, this is the fullness of the breast that occurs on the third to the tenth day post-delivery in which the breast will be hard, tender with distended prominent veins and the skin is tense and hot. Cause. This is due to rise in prolactin levels following a reduction in the estrogen and progesterone levels due to the expulsion of the placenta. The rise in prolactin levels cause the flow of blood through the breast to increase causing venous engorgement and also production of milk by acini cells of the alveoli. Management. Encourage the woman to put the baby frequently to the breast as sucking is the best treatment for engorged breast. Advise the woman to take hot showers and gently massage her breast. Encourage the woman to gently express the milk from the breast before feeds so that the baby can fix more easily. Give prescribed analgesics such as Ponaval 1 gram 3 times daily for 3 days. Side effects. Liver damage, renal failure in high doses. Nursing considerations, monitor liver function test, asses for fever and pain, type of pain location. 5. Constipation. Definition, a condition where there is incomplete or infrequent action of the bowels with consequent filling of the rectum with hard feces causing pain. Bailier's Nurses Dictionary 25th edition. Causes. This can be due to relaxed abdominal muscles due to effects of progesterone and labor. Painful perineal lacerations. Management. 1. 
Advise the woman to be taking a lot of fluids especially plain water at least 10 glasses a day to keep the bowel contents easier to evacuate and soft. 2. Provide a high fiber, fruit, vegetable and all wheat cereals. 3. Advise the woman to be on bowel training like the use of the toilet at specific times, as before breakfast and early morning. 6. Cracked nipples. Causes. The cause of cracked nipples is incorrect positioning of the baby and faulty fixing of the baby to the nipple. Signs and symptoms. 1. Cracked nipple which may bleed. 2. The nipple will be tender. Management. 1. Teach the woman on how to properly fix the baby to the nipple with the areola in the baby's mouth. 2. Encourage the woman to breastfeed the baby frequently. 7. Hemorrhoids. Definition, these are enlarged or dilated veins in the mucous membrane or just outside the rectum. Causes. Constipation This may cause straining out stool predisposing the woman to hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids can be aggravated by the pressure of the fetal head on the anus during the perennial phase of labor. Signs and symptoms. Rectal pain especially if the hemorrhoids are thrombused. Rectal bleeding is any hemorrhoid may bleed especially after defecation. Mild incontinence of stool due to imperfect closure of the anal cushions. On inspection the hemorrhoids may be seen. Management. Teach the woman measures to prevent constipation such as high-fiber diet, taking plenty of oral fluids. Encourage the woman to have warm sits baths as they provide comfort and keep the anal area clean. Encourage the woman to have bed rest during the periods when the hemorrhoids are engorged so that the engorgement can be subsiding. 8. Retention of urine. Definition, this is inability to pass urine from the bladder which may be due to obstruction or be of nervous origin. It is the inability of the bladder to empty urine partially or completely. Bailier's Nurses Dictionary 25th Edition. Causes. 1. The woman with perennial trauma may have difficulty in deciding whether they have normal control. 2. Where the woman has undergone an epidural or spinal anesthesia. This can have an effect on the neurological sensors that control urine release and flow. Urine retention occurs in the first two days, especially if the labor was difficult. Signs and symptoms. Poor urine output. Dysuria or pain when passing urine. On abdominal palpations, the uterus will reveal abdominal tenderness. The full bladder will be visible and palpated. There may be parexia. Management. I will open a nearby tap to encourage stimulation of micturition. In severe situations, I will catheterize the woman. 9. Postpartum blues. Definition. These are brief periods of tearfulness, emotion instability, poor sleep and irritability that affect a lot of women during the first week after delivery. Causes. The actual cause is unknown, but hormonal influences that changes in estrogen, progesterone and prolactin levels seem to be implicated as the emotional period appears to coincide with production of milk in the breast. Signs and symptom. Irritability. Emotional instability. Poor sleep. Brief episodes of tearfulness. Management. Postpartum blues is typically mild and resolves. No specific treatment is required. The woman needs to be given emotional support and reassurance during the experience. May need further evaluation if symptom persists over two weeks.